Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. Today I'm going to talk about 20 Windows tips and tricks that will turn you into a power user. If you are in fact a power user, you probably don't want to watch this video. But if you are like most people, uh, you can't just use a smartphone. You most likely have a, a PC and it's probably running Windows because most people use Windows. And you probably don't know how to do all the cool stuff that the techies know how to do that makes them quick and productive and all that kind of stuff. So that's what this video is about. 20 Windows tips. So we're going to start off with browsing here and uh, I'll open my web browser here. And the first thing that uh, people complain to me about is that uh, they can't see the, you know, the text size in the browser is very slow. So when you've got a tab open, all you're going to do is you're going to hold down the control key and type plus or minus. And you can zoom in and out on any website you want. You can make the font really huge. If you want to reset it to the 100%, i.e. the standard zoom level, just type control zero and boom, you're done. Now, let's say that you are browsing for something and you want to capture a certain image. Like uh, you, you click this image here and you try to right click and do save image as and on some websites it doesn't work. Okay, so let's say it doesn't work on here and you just want to capture this image. How do you do it? Well, there's this thing called the snipping tool and uh, the shortcut for this is Win Shift S. So you press the, win sh the Windows key and you hold it, you press Shift and you hold it, and then you type S. Win Shift S. That brings up the snipping tool. Now you'll notice up here uh, it defaults to rectangular snip. There's also freeform snip and window snip. So like if I pick window snip, I can just move the mouse and it'll pick either this browser window or if I move it up here, it'll do the whole desktop or whatever other window I have open. But I'm going to say uh, rectangular snip and then I'm just going to come here and I'm going to hold the mouse down and highlight my image roughly and go, there you go, poof. Now you'll notice it has the, the, the snipping tool pop-up shows up here and if you click this, it's going to actually open that image in the snipping tool. Um, you can edit it, you can save it, you can do all kinds of other cool things. Uh, it's worth noting here that if you click the three dots and go to settings, you'll notice here it says automatically copy changes and automatically save screenshots. So for the first one, uh, we're going to open Word because I'm going to show you that say you have a Word document, you're like blah 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 blah, and you just use that snipping tool, uh, you can do Control V paste and it's going to paste that image in. Now, of course, the image is uh, kind of wonky. It's Word. What do you, what do you want? Uh, the point here is that when you use the WinShift S snipping tool, it automatically copies whatever you capture to the clipboard. So you could just paste it into whatever document you're working on. It, autom it, it also defaults to automatically save screenshots. So if we open up Explorer and we go to Pictures, Screenshots, you're going to notice oh, look, there's that. Uh, Oh, la, 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 la. There's that uh, image that I just captured, and hey, that's pretty cool. Now, I'm going to open up a whole bunch of windows here. So I got a, I got a bunch of windows open, and of course, when you want to switch between open applications, you can, you know, have them kind of hovering over each other like this, and you can just click the bar, and well, what if I want to get back to, to Brave? Well, I can come down to the taskbar and click the icon, but the other thing I can do is just simply type Alt-Tab. And if I type, if I hold down Alt and hit Tab, and then let go of Tab, this happens. I'm still holding down the Alt key. If I let go of Alt, it disappears. So hold down Alt and type Tab, and then repeatedly type Tab, and you'll notice it's highlighting the different windows. So say I want to go to Word. There you go. Say I want to go back to Brave. Uh, doot, doot, doot. There you go. So Alt Tab is a handy way to switch between windows. But there's actually an even better way, and that is Windows Key Tab. So you just type Windows Tab and let go, and you'll notice what happens here. Uh, all the open windows on this screen are here, and whatever one I want, I just click. So I do Windows Tab again, and I can pick another one, I'll pick like VLC or something. Now the nifty thing about Win Tab is that if you have multiple screens, uh, you're not going to see, like you notice with Alt Tab here, this is just like all the open windows on both your screens. If you do Win Tab, on each screen it's going to show you only those windows that are open on that screen. 
which is actually even more handy. Now, if you want to, you can get into this at the bottom here, new desktop. You can have multiple desktops. I've never used it because, yeah, I know everyone goes on and on about how multiple desktops are great. Uh, I don't use them. If you want to, you can click new desktop and play around with that. You can actually have multiple sort of virtual desktops and switch between them using WinTab. So that's pretty cool, but what happens if you just want to, you know, you're browsing, uh, you read a wonderful article on scottystech.info, and you clicked and you downloaded a file. How the heck do you get to the desktop? Well, you just come down here in the lower right-hand corner, just to the right of the time and date, and there's this little bar that appears, and you just click it. And voila, you have the desktop. And if you click it again, it brings all the windows back up. Now, remember when we were in the browser and you could do Control plus minus? Well... There's another trick, and that is to hold down control and use the mouse wheel up and down. So then you don't even have to type control plus and control minus because they're on different sides of the keyboard. But back on our desktop here, you can do the same control scroll wheel click, hold down control and move the scroll wheel, and you'll notice your icons are getting bigger and smaller. This is like the number two thing that people ask me is they say like, yeah, look, this is the standard icon size and I can't read that text, it's too small. Hold down control, wheel up, and you can make those icons really, really big. Okay, once you've downloaded files, you're rocking and rolling, um, you're going to need the file explorer. Now what you can do is just come down here and click the yellow folder, boom, there's file explorer, right? But what if it's not open? Well, there's a shortcut for explorer, and that is Windows key E. So you hold down Win and type E, and boom, you have explorer. Now the cool thing about this is if you hold down the Win key and type E repeatedly, you can go... I just opened five Explorer windows by doing Win E E E E. Now, if you have a bunch of open windows, another trick here is you can just come here and you can click the X's, but you don't have to. So let me open up a whole bunch of other Explorer windows, and when I come down here and hover over Explorer, you'll see the uh, it, it's showing all of them. I can close these one by one. I can even close them from here, and if I hover, it shows me which one. But the easier thing to do to close them all is to just right-click and do Close All Windows for Explorer. Ta-da! And of course my Brave is still here and everything else. So, let's do Win EE. -E. What if I want to copy files from one place to the next? Well, I've got my two windows. If I grab this window to the left, and then I select the other Explorer window here, that's called a Windows Snap, and it allows you to just snap the windows side by side. If I grab the title bar, and move it down, it then unsnaps them. So this is like a quick way if you want to copy files from point A to point B. Win EE, -E, drag, click, and there you go. Now I can go to, say, um, uh, downloads over here, and then I can go to uh, data stuff over here, and I can drag and drop files between these two locations. If you want to know the actual path to uh, where you are, you can just come up here and click the folder icon in the address bar and it'll say, ah, that's D stuff. So now I know where I am. Now, another handy trick is hovering over a file. Like here you have a video file and if you just hover over it and pause there for a second, it's going to say, ah, this is an MP4 video. It's 28 megabytes in size and the length is 5 minutes and 54 seconds. This works for every image type or for every file type. Uh, if you hover over an image, it's going to say, ah, that's 4,000 by 3,000 pixels, and it's 2.43 megabytes in size. That is a handy trick that a surprisingly few people actually know about. Um, you have to be a little patient because you have to hover and pause, and poof, it'll pop up and give you some handy information. Now, let's go back to our snappy thing here. When you're actually moving files from point A to point B, sometimes you want to copy and sometimes you want to. To move. Now what most people do is they'll they'll click an image and they'll hold down the control key and they'll click another one and then click another one and but there's a much easier way to do it and that is to simply drag your mouse, zhip, highlight all the files and whether you're dragging one or multiple files what you're going to do is you're not going to click the left mouse button you're going to click the right mouse button on one of the selected files and then drag into the other window. And when I let go of the right mouse button, it gives me options. I can either copy the files here, which will create duplicate files, I can move them here, or I can even create shortcuts here. So let's say copy here. Ta-da! Now I have a copy of all those files. Isn't that handy? Okay, let's say you need to send a bunch of files to another person. 
Um, you can send them individually. Uh, that's very often a little bit slow. What if, what if you want to make one compressed folder of a bunch of files? Well, all you do is select them and then right click on any of them. Now in Windows 11, you're going to see this compress to zip file option, which you would just select. Uh, in Windows 10, and in some locations in Windows 11, you're going to have to click show more options. And then here you see the, the older Windows menu, uh, which gives you send to compressed zip folder. So if we have in Windows 11, you can use either trick. If, you, if you're on Windows 10, you're going to have to do this send to compressed zip folder. So let me just do that again for Windows 11 users. Right click on any file and just do compress to zip file. And what it's going to do is compress them all and then give you this new file with a name. So you can say like uh, zipped stuff, press enter, and boom, all those files that are there are now inside a compressed folder. And it's worth noting here that I just compressed a bunch of images and video files. Images and video files do not compress very much, but you still may want to do this little trick every now and then because say you're uh, emailing a file, a bunch of files, or you're sending it via like IM or something. Uh, very often if you try to send multiple files, it's much slower than if you'd send one big file. So even if it's not compressing a lot, it's a handy little trick. And when the person you're sending it to gets it, they just double click it, open it up, and then you can click extract all, or you can drag and drop. Uh, you can use your, your right click copy move trick to move the, the files to wherever you want. So that's pretty handy. The next trick, I'm here in Word. Um, this also works in pretty much any other application. Uh, if you highlight a word and you want to make it bold, you just type Control B. If you highlight a word and you want to make it italics, you type Control I. And again, highlight a word and want to make it underline, you just do Control U. Ta-da! And if you want to unbold it, just do Control B again. Of course, you can use the buttons up here in the toolbar. That's kind of, you know, it's great, but when you're typing something, uh, it's good to know the keyboard shortcuts because you can save a whole lot of time, especially with another trick that I'll show you next. That is speed editing. Okay, so if you are on uh, in, say, Word, or this even works like in the browser, you start highlighting, and then you hold down the Shift key and use the arrow keys. You'll notice you can highlight while you're holding down shift and pressing the arrow keys, you can highlight one character at a time, basically. And of course, the same works over here in Word. I'm highlighting one character at a time. I can go down, I can go up, I can go left. That's pretty nifty. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you're editing and you want to jump between words, you can go like this with the arrow keys and get to the word you want, or you can hold down the control key and press right arrow or left arrow, and you see it jumps between words. So this allows you to get to between words much more quickly. Now the really cool part is if you hold down control and shift at the same time, you can do some really cool stuff. So here I am at the beginning. I'm going to hold down control and shift on the right side of my keyboard, and then I'm going to use the arrow keys. I can highlight giant chunks of text very quickly. Now here's the trick. I still have Control and Shift held down, but you'll notice at the end after that DFH, when I use Control Shift arrow, see how it's actually, it's keeping that space after the DFH. I don't want that. So what I do is because I have Control and Shift held down, I let go of Control, which gives me Shift arrow, which as you will call is one character at a time. So if you put all that together, you're like, Control shift, right arrow, down arrow, down arrow, and then left arrow, because I'd only want it up to here, and then ah, I've got that extra space, let go of control, left arrow, boom. I have the selected text, and I just made it all bold faced. You're gonna have to play around with the control shift arrows versus shift arrows versus just control arrows. Uh, it does sometimes work slightly different in different applications. For example, in Notepad++, it does weird things if you try to do control up arrow or down arrow. Play around with it, and when you get the hang of it, you will be way, way, way faster. Uh, because sure, you can use the mouse and select things, but when you're madly typing something, you don't want to take your hands off the keyboard. So this is one of the tricks that programmers use all the time to save tons and tons and tons of time. Okay, so this one is a little bit crazy. Um, Right. What you're going to do is, when you're typing something, 
in pretty much any application, every now and then, hit Control S. See what that did? It just said, save as. So now I hit save. And then I type some more, I type some more. And then I'm going to take a break, so I just hit Control S. And what that does is it simply saves the file. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but you would be amazed at the number of people who do not know that Control S is the same as File Save or clicking the little disk icon. This will save you tons and tons of misery. So here we are back on our desktop. And what happens if you've you got a bunch of programs running like I do here? Like, look at all this stuff. It's all running. And I mean, oh my god. And something is getting really pokey, right? So, okay. Uh, there's a trick. Most people refer to it as the power menu. You just come down to the start button and you right click on it and it gives you all these handy little things. There's, uh, it'll show you the desktop, the run dialog, search, file explorer, settings, manager, PowerShell, computer manager, disk manager, network connections, device manager, system, blah, 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 blah. The one we're going to do is task manager. So you can right click the start button and do task manager. Sometimes the, the uh, taskbar at the bottom is missing, so the other trick to open the task manager is Control alt delete and then you click task manager. Now you're going to have to expand the task manager because the default is it will look like this. So you click the more details button there and okay here you go. Now you'll notice that this is all the stuff I have running, right? These are the apps that I have running and it says CPU usage is in this column and the numbers are bouncing up and down and memory is in this column. Now, if you have memory, like some application is using like, you know, two, three thousand megabytes, that's like two or three gigabytes of memory, that might be why your computer is really slow. Um, that's possible. The, the real one that you want to keep an eye on is CPU usage. If your computer slows to a crawl, especially if it's not very new, you'll see here that like, you know, say this AZSoft screen recorder that I'm using, maybe it'll be pegged to like 80% of CPU and your cooling fans will be spinning like mad and or maybe the Brave browser is like gobbling CPU and there's something wrong with it. What Task Manager allows you to do is just come in here and go, right, okay, I'm going to click this application and I'm going to come down here in the lower right hand, right hand corner and click End Task. Ta-da! Brave browser is no longer running. Then you can see the total CPU usage up here, and if it drops down and your computer becomes more responsive, you know there was a problem with that application. You just killed it, and now you can get back to work. So those are 20 power user tips for everyone. And by everyone, I mean the vast majority of people who use computers, because very few of us are actually techies. So, right, uh, play around with those. Uh, if you like this video and you found some of these tips useful, let me know, because there are like a ton more uh, I just picked the ones that were the, the most handy, uh, the ones that I use most often. Uh, also the ones that my wife said like, oh my god, how did you do that? So uh, that's these. But again, uh, there are plenty more where that came from. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.